Our Father in heaven, as we honor and glorify you this day, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for each one that is here, for the opportunity to share, to fellowship with one another, to encourage one another. Father, we ask that you would be with those who are sick and afflicted, comfort them, strengthen them, guide them. Restore those who are in hospitals to their homes. We pray that you would uplift those who are grieving, carry them through this time of trial. We ask that you would hear and answer in accordance with your will each and every prayer that's on our heart. We ask now, Father, as we bow uh, before you humbly, but come before your throne of grace, that you would speak to us through your word in a very unique and special way. Father, I ask, Father, that you would use me simply as a tool through which your word is spoken, but that we might hear your voice through the power of the Holy Spirit to touch our lives, encourage us, change us where it's needed, and give us hope for the coming day when Jesus returns. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. It is Grandparents' Day. like to welcome Jack to our service. Glad you're here. Enjoyed the video. Enjoyed the, the, uh, uh, the young people as they shared their grandparent greetings to their grandparents. Uh, it's always an enjoyment to see that and to hear their thoughts and their comments. I'd also like to welcome Hallie to our uh, congregation and service today. Uh, she, uh, Hallie uh, Lanning, is the uh, granddaughter of Robert, uh, Rob and Karen Lanning from Ripley, Illinois, one of our sister churches in uh, Illinois. So we're glad that you're here with us today and hope that you receive a blessing from being here. It is Grandparents' Day, and because of that, uh, I had asked uh, the uh, Coder sisters to share a little bit because they've gone through a very difficult time in that Grandpa Stone died in uh, a couple months ago. Grandma Stone was just buried yesterday. Her funeral was yesterday in Grandview. For those of you who were at the funerals, uh, thank you for your support. It's a hard thing to have to lay a grandparent to rest to hear the accolades and about them, it brings back a lot of thoughts and memories. It was kind of unique, as I thought, the date you, you know, yesterday was the 7th of September. And uh, although he's been deceased and waiting resurrection for a long time, my, uh, one of my grandfathers would have been 146 yesterday. Uh, yesterday was his birthday. I often think about that on the 7th of uh, September. And... Uh, we think about grandparents, we think about uh, uh, our own mortality as we begin to get older, and um, I remembered um, an event that happened uh, several years ago in uh, Minnesota, because I used to drive at a transit, used to take kids to preschool, I kid some of the young people telling them I went to preschool for 11 years, um, because that's how long I, I drove to the preschool, and of course, the, you develop a rapport with these uh, little kids that are from age three to five that are going to preschool, and and uh, I was had surgery at one point, and they had a sub driver for me, and um, all of a sudden, uh, one little boy said uh, to the bus driver, he said, "When's bus driver Dale coming back?" And he said, well, you know, just have to think about it. He's coming back on Monday. And he said, uh, why do you ask? He said, well, I told this driver, well, you're old. Then he thought a minute, he said, but bus driver Dale, he's really old. And uh, 
we, we think about our mortality as we get older. And uh, I remember my mother um, had, a con- had a concern as she got older. She was a Sunday school teacher for years and years. And finally, when the church was making a few changes, they were going to combine her class with another group. And she, she was in tears because she said, nobody wants me anymore. And it hurt her because she had taught for decades. And it wasn't that she wasn't wanted, but there were some other people at the same time that were wanting to uh, lend their talents and that particular congregation uh, wanted to make this kind of a change. And it is a thing when young people, when uh, people get older and then they're replaced, sometimes older ones are not appreciated. There's one thing that the entire congregation, no matter what age you are, you can do, and that is to pray. Pray for one another. For the older ones, for the little ones, and those we don't even know. I want to take a moment and have prayer because there's one individual that is very special to uh, Lynette. It's her niece. She's 50 years old. Her name is Cam- Tammy Kinney. And David, if or uh, David, if you'd write the name down, it's Tammy. The last name is spelled K-I-N-N-E-Y. Put her on the prayer list. She has. She's 50 years old. She has MS. She's in a hospital in Texas. She had a stroke. Her legs and her arms are paralyzed and she can't talk. And she's only 50. And so what the entire church can do is to lift her up to Almighty God in prayer. Father in heaven, right now we take a moment to pray for Tammy as we are so far away and so very few here even know her, it's sometimes difficult to get involved. Just like individuals who are affected by a hurricane or a tornado. We don't know them, but we're told to pray for them. Father, this individual is very special to Lynette, and on her behalf, we raise her to you, asking you to intervene and relax her muscles, bring some of the, uh, alleviate some of the paralysis, if it would be your will, help her to recover as much as possible. For a person with this kind of a debilitating disease and then having a stroke, it makes it very, very tough, particularly on the care, not only her, but her her immediate caregivers and being so far away, we feel so helpless. But we do pray because we know you're watching over her. We ask that you would care for her and those who are... uh, right by her side and we leave her in your care with in hope in Jesus name amen older people though can be funny you never know what's going to come out of their mouth there's even some individuals that are getting ready for surgery and the nurse asks please Leroy give me your gum and he says it's your own gum. Uh, Leroy, I'm never going to forget that. 
There was like a grandson who took his grandpa out to dinner. He wanted to impress him with how, uh, how educated he was. He wanted to spend some time with grandpa and let grandpa know that he'd learned proper English. And after dinner, he said, Grandpa, did you enjoy an eloquent suffice? Which meant, was it sufficient? And Grandpa paused and said, What did you say? Did you say we were eating elephant and rice? My father fell asleep at age 86 and around 85. He went to a funeral. And he walked into the funeral in a two-piece suit and tennis shoes. And some people kind of snickered, and I said, at 85, you can do whatever you want. There's a picture that I have in my phone, and I send it to David. Older people sometimes just don't care, and you can do whatever you want. Do you have that picture, David? Take a look at that. <laughs> they do what they want. At a certain age, you just don't care what people think anymore. But you know, older people, yeah, yeah, there's horsing around for sure. I can see him. Thank you, David. As you look around here, there's a lot of seniors. How many, how many grandparents are here? It's about a good portion, yeah. And you younger ones, the Lord tarries, you're going to be one someday. Often a lot of churches are made up of seniors. And individuals who are older, they have experience in life, and they can teach young people a lot of things. If you as a young person would be willing to accept it. In Exodus chapter 20, in verse 12, we have the passage that says, Honor your father and your mother, that the days may be prolonged in the, in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Honor your father and your mother. And on Grandparents' Day, when people think about it, it's, this is kind of a more recent holiday, when you're not honoring your parents, or grandparents, you're breaking one of the big ten, so to speak. Have you ever thought what the penalty was back then? We think the, the penalty for not honoring your father and mother, we can be grateful to God Almighty and for the age of grace in which we live that we don't have this penalty today carried out. And from what I read, because the Jewish leaders, the hierarchy in, the, in uh, the nation of Israel had the last decision to make, it's not believed that this particular penalty was really carried out, but look at Deuteronomy 21, 18 to 21, if any man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or his mother, and when they chastise, would chastise him, he will not even listen to them, then his father and mother shall seize him and bring him out to the elders of the city at the gateway of his hometown. And they shall say to the elders of the city, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious, he will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And they're going to stone him to death. They end up stoning him to death. That's the punishment. They take him out and they stone him. All of the men of the city will stone him to death so you will remove the evil from your midst and all Israel will hear of it and fear. 
The purpose of giving a boundary, a warning, don't do this or you're going to get such and such a discipline, is to teach you not to do evil. It's not to make you unhappy. It's not to take fun and enjoyment away from you. It's so that you would learn the boundaries that God has given us. In Scripture, the Bible says, in my humble opinion, it teaches one man, one woman for life. And yet we have individuals that in today's society, they don't care. They can have sexual enjoyment with anybody they want whenever and whoever they want, whenever they want. And it's okay. And we're supposed to condone that. No. The Bible says no. And it's not because God was trying to be a meanie when he said only one wife. When he said, you shall not commit adultery, he was not trying to take a man or a woman's fun away. He knew the heartache that it would bring and what it does to children. Look at what society is today. How many individuals really don't have a concept of a father and mother both in the home. There are a lot of individuals that are rebellious, stubborn, know-it-alls. And yet the New Testament even carries the thought from the Old Testament over when Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. If God was where he needs to be in the home, in the school, in society, we wouldn't be where we are but we've allowed him and others have just not cared and have pushed him out. And it's sometimes when older ones get stubborn. It's hard to raise, it's hard to raise parents when they get old and crotchety. And it comes time when the older ones need the tender care of someone else. It's been said that when we get older, we become more childlike. Maybe it's a good thing. But many of the seniors and considerably older seniors today, and there's getting fewer and fewer, are individuals who saw World War II. They're individuals that went through the Great Depression of the 30s, late 20s, 30s. Today, young people have no concept of what a dial phone is. Today, if you put a cursive alphabet above the blackboard, and a picture of a four-speed shift pattern, you'd wipe out a whole generation of individuals. They wouldn't know what to do. There's one test when they put some young, uh, some teenagers in them to a test. They asked them to make a telephone call, and they gave them a dial phone. They pay, They said, "How do we do it?" They said, "Well, you got to pick up the, the receiver." They were just kind of dialing. Well, you got to pick it up and get a dial tone. So they picked it up and listened and hung it up. They never did get it because there's new modern ways of things, things that today's generation knows 
nothing about. The real little ones have no concept of what is uh, the celebration or the remembrance of this Wednesday is going to be. The remembrance of 9-11, 2001. That's not that long ago. Most of us in this room remember the event, where you were, how we feel, how united the country came, all those things about it. But you know, the little ones, um, Jake, Lily, James, Maddie, Ryder, Sean, and probably more of you, you have no con, you don't even remember that. But it's a, it's a day that was really traumatic for our country. And so it is with our older people, the seniors who saw war or who dealt with the, uh, the residual effects of war. And more recent, individuals that I know that have fallen asleep in death because they were casualties of Agent Orange in Vietnam. And now we have residual effects of individuals from 9-11. We have individuals that have been, uh, they've been specifically mentioned because some of those first responders are dying of cancer because of what they endured trying to save those who were there. Oh, they're old. Uh, he doesn't really know what he's talking about. You, know, you got to take his driver's license away. Getting old is something we're all going to do. The thing that we need to do as a church family, from the seniors on down, is to listen to the godly wisdom from people who have read the scriptures for years and have taught the scriptures to their children and to their children's children. We have a generation now where grandparents are now raising their grandchildren. And that's a hard thing. Life lessons of old, to hear the stories of individuals who have been through a lot of trauma. Sitting, sitting with an, an elderly individual and they talk about what they experienced in World War II. Most of the people in recent years just don't want to talk about it. It's so bad, they want to they, they live it in their mind every day, but they don't want to talk about it. Or individuals who, as they get very, very forgetful, they can't remember what they had for breakfast. And one of the most debilitating diseases today is Alzheimer's and dementia. And my aunt, it was... It was sad, and yet when you hear or see something and how it's responded to, you know, sometimes it's humorous. I had an aunt that would lived in the same building with my father, and I went to visit, and we went down to breakfast. It was, it was a very nice senior living facility, and they had kind of a restaurant style uh, dining room so that you cho chose what off the menu that you wanted. And so we had breakfast and my uh, the waitress asked my dad, he said, Don, what would you like? And he said, oh, I guess I'll have the continental, continental breakfast. And my aunt said, Don, what's the continental? And he said, the same thing you have every morning. Now, it's kind of humorous in one way, but she couldn't remember. But there's a song that a lot of people that, that I've heard, and when a person gets older, they may not remember yesterday, but they remember a long time ago. 
and this one individual didn't know their kids, but she could sing Rock of Ages and quote John 3.16. Scripture will stick with you. This is Grandparents' Day, and someday, you young ones, if the Lord tarries, you're going to become one. And the Scripture says that we need to discipline individuals who are young to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Proverbs 2, 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Oh, that doesn't mean he's not going to get off the straight and narrow. But if they're taught, the memories of their youth will always be with them. School teachers and bus drivers don't have it the same way they did years ago. Somebody was telling me about a years ago that their relative was a was a school teacher and one boy misbehaved so they tied him she tied him to the desk and he sat tied up in school while the rest went out for recess. Well you wouldn't hear that today. Or the bus driver that the kid was unruly, you know, stopped in the middle of nowhere, opened the door and said, get out and walk. And as recent as the 1980s, a bus driver asked one young boy who was being disciplined, sitting on the front seat, was asked to kind of settle down and he said, I don't have to. And you can't make me. And you can't touch me because my dad's a lawyer. And if you touch me, we'll sue. And you'll lose your job. He stopped the bus. Took his belt off. Wrapped it around his fist. And got right up in the kid's face about this far away. And he said, you're right. If I touch you, I'll be fired. But I don't need this job, and if I'm going to lose it, I'm going to take every piece of you I can. He had to threaten him somehow. The kid backed down. But, you know, that's just the way it is. The respect of the elders is not there today. And it's missing because the scriptures are not being enforced and taught and if God was back in society, in the school, in the home where he needs to be, it wouldn't be this way. But, you know, things are getting worse and worse. I'm going to read you a quote. We have a very confused generation. We have seniors raising their grandkids. Kids get their physical needs met, but are wounded by the ones that created them. Mixed signals, they're loved, they're spoiled, yet feel unwanted. They grow up confused. The statistics show that many seniors are raising their grandchildren. The dynamics of this is that children are getting their physical needs met, but inside they are wounded due to the rejection of those who made them. They're getting mixed signals because they're loved, they're spoiled, they're also unwanted, they're confused. The young people are confused about who they are in their position in the family, in their position in society. They are confused emotionally, even about who they are genetically as male and female. This confusion is provoking abnormal acting out either sexually, abusively, with substance or violently as it takes on ri ridiculous causes just to stir up invented conflicts. A fatherless society has proven itself to be, cre be creating criminals due to no discipline in the home, end quote. Boy, that's harsh. But the church needs to step up because we have Jesus to teach. And we have individuals who are wise beyond their years, older persons 
of whom the advice and correction can be given. Abraham, Noah, Enoch, Moses, practically all of those with authority were elderly. The Native Americans who were the elderly were the ones who were most experienced and always the leaders giving the counsel to the tribe of what was best, the old ones, the seniors. So I find it good that we honor Grandparents' Day. We pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I wonder how many young people know what it is to really have a father. Young people need to be taught the things of God. One final scripture, Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16 and 31. The gray head is a crown of glory. It is found in the way of righteousness. Whether you have gray hair or no hair, it's the seniors that have lived life and have the experience to pass on to those under them, their children, their grandchildren, and their great-grandchildren, and so forth. That's why the song, God's way is the best way. God knows what is best. He's given us the pattern in his word because if Jesus tarries, all you young ones will someday be old people. Amen.